Hello students, welcome to the online English class. Today we are going to discuss a chapter from the book Moments. Chapter 8, A House is not a home. A house is not a home is a story written by the acclaimed writer Zan Godioso. So this story basically revolves around the life of a small teenage boy like you all. The title of the chapter talks about the difference between a home and a house. A house is only a physical structure, whereas a home is a place where people live together, sharing their joys and sorrows, ups and downs. So let us go to the storyline and start with it. The story reflects the challenges of being a teenager and the problems of growing up. How does the author overcome his problems? So the story reflects the problems and the challenges of being a teenager as you all must be aware of it and as you are all teenagers. So this story deals with that and uh, how does the author, the teenager boy overcome the problems. So let us start with the story. My first year of high school felt awkward after leaving junior high at the head of my class with all seniority the upper grade levels could afford me. It felt strange starting over as a freshman. The school was twice as big as my old school and to make matters worse, my closest friends were sent to different high school. I felt very isolated. So the boy describes that the first year of high school he felt very awkward. So he had left his junior school and the, at the head of his class with all his seniority and the upper grades could afford him. It felt strange starting all over as a freshman in a new school. The school was twice as big as the old school and to make matters worse, the closest friends of this boy was not there anymore. They were all sent to different schools. I missed my old teachers so much that I would go back and visit them. They would encourage me to get involved in school activities so that I could meet new people. They told me that in time I would adjust and probably end up loving my new school more than I had my old one. They made me promise that when that happened, I would still come by and visit them from time to time. I understood the psychology in what they were saying, but I took some comfort in it nonetheless. So he missed his old teachers so much that he would go back and visit them. He missed his friends too. So whenever he used to go back to the old school, the teachers encouraged him to get involved in school activities of the new school so that I could meet new people. They told him that in time he will adjust to the new school and they made him promise also when that happened also he will still come by and visit them, the school and the teachers. And he understood why they were saying that, he understood the psychology of that but he took some comfort in going there. So he continued to do that. One Sunday afternoon, not long after I had started the high school, I was sitting at home at our dining room table along doing homework. It was a cold and windy fall day and we had a fire going in our fireplace. As usual, my red tabby cat was lying on top of all my papers, purring loudly and occasionally swatting my pen for entertainment sake. So one Sunday afternoon, not long after he had gone to the new school and he was sitting at home at our dining room table doing his homework. He had a pet cat and that pet cat was sitting near to him and it was a cold and windy day and he had a fireplace lit up in his place only. And in western countries, you know, it is very cold. The weather conditions are extremely cold you can see that there is a fireplace in the rooms so that they can keep the room warm all the day. One has to put wood into the fireplace and the fire will keep burning and keep the room really warm. That is the usual thing done in the western countries. So you can see that in films and all you have seen. So what happens is that the, he, the fireplace was burning. He was sitting by the dining table and doing his homework and this cat was also nearby. He was in a very comfortable state. His red tabby cat was lying on top of all his papers while he was doing the homework and the tabby cat was playing with the pen also. And she was never far from me. 
I had rescued her when she was a kitten and somehow she knew that I was the one responsible for giving her the good life. So the cat was really genuinely fond of him. He had rescued the cat when she was a small kitten and somehow the cat had an understanding that the boy was responsible for her well-being. The boy was responsible for her to be comfortable in this world. She was never far from me. I had rescued her when she was a kitten and somehow she knew that I was the one responsible for giving her the good life. So this kitten never was far from the boy. He, she always used to remain with the boy. She always used to give him company. The boy had rescued her when she was a very small kitten and for some reason the cat knew that the boy was the reason for her to be happy and well and he was responsible for giving her a good life. My mother kept stoking the fire to keep the house nice and warm. Suddenly I smelled something strange. Then I noticed it, smoke pouring in through the seams of the ceiling. The smoke began to fill the room so quickly that we could barely see. Groping our way to the front door, we ran out into the front yard. By the time we made our way outside, the whole roof was engulfed in flames and was spreading quickly. I ran to the neighbors to call the fire department while I watched my mother run back into the house. So the mother kept stalking the fire to keep the house nice and warm. Suddenly, the boy notices something strange. He noticed it and suddenly the smoke pouring in through the ceiling. The smoke began to fill the room so quickly that we could barely see. Suddenly, the smoke was coming into this room and the mother and the son, the young teenager boy, the author, he could not see anything in the room. They wanted to go out and suddenly they ran out to the front yard. By the time they made their way outside, the whole roof was engulfed in fire and it was all spreading very quickly. The boy runs to the neighbors to call the fire department and he watched his mother run back to the house. When he was deciding that he had to go to the neighbors to call the fire brigade, suddenly he sees that his mother is running back to the fire. The house was in fire. My mother then ran out of the house carrying a small metal box full of important documents. She dropped the case on the lawn and in a crazed state ran back to the house. I knew what she was after. My father had died when I was young and I was certain that she was not going to let his pictures and letters go up in flames. They were the only things that she had to remember him by. Still, I screamed at her, Mom, no! So the mother ran out of the house carrying a small metal box full of important documents. The mother had run into the house when the house was in fire. The boy had noticed that and the mother came back with a box of important documents and she dropped the case on the lawn and so she was in a creased state because she had gone into the house to save the important documents and a few letters and photographs of his father. His father had died when he was very young. All his mother had these photographs and letters to remember him by. She did not want them to be destroyed. So she went into the fire and got them all. They were the only things she had. So she ran back to the fire again. So the boy shouted again, Mom, no! If you see your parent or your father or your mother running into the fire like this, suddenly you are bound to scream. You want to save them. So they, he also started doing the same way. He started screaming the same way that, oh mom, no, don't go. He kept on doing that. I was about to run after her when I felt a large hand hold me back. It was a fireman. I hadn't even noticed that the street had already filled with fire trucks. I was trying to free myself from his grasp yelling, you don't understand, my mother is in there. So he was about to run after his mother. His mother had run back to the house again and he wanted to go after her this time. He was worried about her and he was trying to run after her. Suddenly he felt that a big hand held him from somewhere and he turned back to see that a fireman was standing there. He said, you don't understand, my mother has gone in out there. I want to save her from there. So he held on to me while other firefighters ran into the house. He
he knew that i wasn't acting very logically that if he were to let go i would run he was right so he held on the fireman held on to the boy so that he will not run off he wanted to run off to his mother and the fireman knew very well that the boy wanted to escape he wanted to get back to his mother so he kept on holding on to him boy was not acting very logically he knew that he was going into danger but he wanted to be with his mother so he wanted to run off and the fireman kept on holding on to him it is all right they will get her he said he said it is all right you don't worry but they will come and get her he wrapped a blanket around me and sat me down in our car he quickly took her over to the truck and put an oxygen mask on her i ran over and hugged her all those times i ever argued with her and hated her vanished at the thought of losing her so the boy was really comforted by the fireman and he was taken to their own car and they wrapped a blanket around him he was comforted and he was made to sit there in the car safely in the meanwhile the mother was brought out by the fireman from the house and she was taken to the truck and put an oxygen mask on her so that she could breathe properly the mother had gone into the house and the house was full of smoke she was having a lot of difficulty to breathe so the when the fireman brought her out they put an oxygen mask on her face and she was comforted and the boy quickly ran over to his mother and hugged her he thought of all the times he had fought with her he had argued with her children always argue with their parents for things on they, they don't agree to you all do that many of us do that so that is one thing he also used to do and this time when he was on the verge of losing his mother to the fire he thought that why did i ever argue with my mother why did i ever fight with her he was really afraid that he might lose his mother and that thought made him very scary ever in her life because she was the only person he had in his life she is going to be okay said the fireman she just inhaled a little smoke and then he ran to fight the fire while my mother and i sat there dazed i remember watching my house burn down and thinking that there was nothing i could do about it so the fireman saw that the boy was very upset with his mother's condition he just consoled saying that she just inhaled a little smoke that is why she is like this and he ran back to extinguish the fire while his mother and the boy sat down there dazed they were really shocked to see the surroundings they were really shocked to see the house in fire and he remembers watching his house burn and thinking that there was nothing he could do about it the boy and the mother sat there looking at the house burning down everything inside the house was burning down to ashes and they could not do anything about it they were both feeling very helpless 5 hours later the fire was finally out our house was almost completely burned down but then it struck me i hadn't seen my cat where was my cat much to my horror i realized that she was nowhere to be found then all at once it hit me the new school the fire my cat i broke down in tears and cried and cried i was suffering loss big time 5 hours later the fireman was able to extinguish the fire able to put out the fire and the house was almost completely burned down but suddenly the boy realizes his cat was nowhere to be found the house was burning down and he was worried about his mother he was worried about his own things suddenly he realizes his cat is also be not to be found where did she go he realizes something suddenly the new school the fire and the cat everything connects to each other he was not able to adjust in the new school as suddenly this happens the house is burned down and suddenly his dear cat the pet is also not to be found and he suddenly realizes that he is suffering a lot of loss big loss he is suffering the fireman wouldn't let us go back into the house that night it was still too dangerous dead or alive i couldn't imagine living without knowing about my cat regardless i had to go we piled into the car with just the clothes on our backs and a few of the fireman's blankets and made our way to my grandparents house to spend the night dead or alive he could not think of going without his cat but then he had to leave the place 
the firemen wanted them to leave the place because it was not safe for them to stay back in that place. So they leave the place, mother and son, and they have a few blankets given by the firemen and they go to their grandparents' house to spend that night. The next day, one day, I went to school. When the fire broke out, I was still wearing the dress. I had worn to the church that morning, but I had no shoes. I had kicked them off when I was doing my homework. They became yet another casualty of the fire. So I had to borrow some tennis shoes from my aunt. Why couldn't I just stay away from school? My mother wouldn't hear of it, but I was totally embarrassed by everything. The clothes I was wearing looked weird. I had no books or homework and my backpack was gone. I had my life in that backpack. The more I tried to fit in, the worse it got. Was I destined to be an outcast and a geek of my life? That was what it felt like. I didn't want to grow up, change or have to handle life if it was going to be this way. I just wanted to curl up and die. So the whole house was burnt and they had to go to the boy's grandparents house. The next day was a Monday and the boy had to go to school. When the fire broke out, he was still wearing a dress which he had worn to the church that morning and he had kicked off his shoes while he was doing the homework in the house. So they became yet another casualty of the fire because what has happened that the shoe was there in the, in the room itself and when they came out they never picked up the shoes. The shoe also got burned down. So he had to borrow some tennis shoe from his aunt. He thought why can't I stay away from the school for some time. I don't want to go to school in this condition because I am not wearing my uniform, I don't have my backpack, I am not wearing the proper shoes, I don't have my homework, I don't have my bag, I don't have my things. How can I go to the school just like this? So it was important for the boy to have all these things when he was going to school. He never wanted to go to school that particular day but his mother insisted that you have to go to school. In whichever condition you are, you are having wearing clothes and you borrow the shoes from your aunt and you go to school. So he was feeling very upset because he did not want to go to school that way. He thought he was feeling very depressed and he was feeling very upset. He thought that is he destined to be an outcast and all his life he is supposed to stay like this. The boy is as you can see he is very depressed. He is very upset with the situation. So he is saying he is thinking that he did not want to grow up. This is what the boy was feeling. So he never wanted to grow up. At that particular moment he thought that I don't want to grow up, change or have to handle anything that life is going to give me. He just wanted to curl up and die. He just wanted to be alone. He just wanted to lie down somewhere. He just did not want to live also. He was so depressed with the situation. I walked around the school like a zombie. Everything felt surreal and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. All the security I had known from my old school, my friends, my house and my cat had all been ripped away. He went to the school and he felt like a zombie. He was not feeling nice. Everything felt surreal for him and he wasn't sure that what was going to happen with him. All the security he had, the cat, the house, his old school, his friends, everything had been taken away from him. He was feeling very upset and he was feeling very depressed. When I walked through what used to be my house after the school that day, I was shocked to see how much damage there was. Whatever hadn't been burnt was destroyed by the water and the chemicals they had used to put out the fire. The only material things not destroyed were the photo albums, documents and some other personal items that my mother had managed to heroically rescue. But my cat was gone and my heart aged for her. So when he uh, finished his school that day, he walked through the place where his house used to be, where the house was burned down totally. And suddenly he discovers and he shocked to discover that everything was damaged and only material things they could save was a few photographs and a few documents and some other personal items. His mother has managed to save them in a very heroic manner. There was no time to grieve. My mother rushed me out of the house. We would have to find a place to live and I would have to go buy some clothes for school. 
so he was just standing there and thinking about his favorite cat his favorite pet and he was sad about the whole thing suddenly his mother comes and takes him out so students today we discussed a small portion from the chapter a house is not a home now let us discuss the question answer so let's go to the first question what does the author notice one sunday afternoon what is his mother's reaction what does she do answer is one sunday afternoon the author notices some strange smell suddenly he could see smoke pouring in through the seams of the ceiling and filling the room very quickly the smoke was so thick that they could barely see anything by the time they ran out into the front yard the roof was already engulfed in flames and sweat was spreading very quickly his mother frantically runs back into the house she brings out a small metal box full of important documents she want to bring out important things from the house one by one she is in a crazed state so this was the mother's condition when the fire broke out the sunday afternoon she goes into the house back and she wants to get things and important things and documents and files and all from there and she is in a crazed state she doesn't know what to do that is the situation of the the reaction of the mother let us go to the next question question number 2 why does he break down in tears after the fire why does he break down in tears why does the teenager boy the author of the story why does he break down after the fire why does he cry after the fire answer is after the fire he breaks down into tears because it suddenly strikes him that he had suffered a big loss after a few moments he realizes that his cat could not be seen anywhere and the thought of it the cat might have perished in the fire makes him cry let us go to the next question question number 3 why is the author deeply embarrassed the next day in school which words show his fear and insecurity the answer is the author is deeply embarrassed the next day in school as he was still wearing the same clothes that he had worn to the church in the morning when the fire broke out he had no shoes he had to borrow some tennis shoes from his aunt the clothes he was wearing looked weird he had no books or homework and his backpack was gone everything seemed embarrassing to him words used in the lesson to show his insecurity and fear are outcast and geek like a zombie and wanted to curl up and die everything felt surreal and all the security all had been ripped away all these words are used in the lesson to show the author's fear and insecurity okay understood so students that's all for today we have discussed a chapter from the book moments chapter 8 a house is not a home we will continue with the chapter in the next class bye for now take care stay safe thank you